December 1943. A German Tiger tank, the most feared weapon on the battlefield, grinds to a halt in the frozen mud of the Eastern Front. Not from enemy fire, not from a mine, but from something far more insidious, its own gears shattering like glass inside the transmission. This wasn't an isolated incident. Across every theater of World War II, Tiger tanks were dying not from Allied shells, but from their own mechanical hearts tearing themselves apart. And one man would discover why. Today we're uncovering the hidden engineering catastrophe that crippled Nazi Germany's superweapon, and how the work of Dr. Robert Stevenson turned a metallurgical mystery into a tactical advantage that helped win the war. The Tiger Tank. Even saying the name conjures images of unstoppable steel beasts dominating the battlefields of World War II. With armor up to 100 millimeters thick and the legendary 88 millimeter gun, a single Tiger could, and often did, take on entire columns of Allied tanks and win. German tankers achieved kill ratios that seem almost impossible today. Some Tiger units reported destroying over 10 enemy tanks for every Tiger lost. On paper, this machine was invincible. But here's what the propaganda films didn't show you. For every Tiger destroyed in combat, several more were abandoned by their crews. Not because they were cowards, but because their tanks simply stopped working. By 1944, Allied intelligence had noticed something strange. Tiger tanks were being found abandoned across Europe, often with minimal battle damage. Their crews had simply walked away. Why would anyone abandon the most powerful tank in the world? Enter Dr. Robert Stevenson, a British metallurgist who would answer that question by literally breaking apart the Tiger's secrets atom by atom. Stevenson wasn't on the front lines. He worked in a nondescript facility in England where captured German equipment was shipped for analysis. It was unglamorous work, but absolutely critical. When the first captured Tiger arrived at his facility, Stevenson began what would become an obsession. While others examined the armor and the gun, Stevenson went deeper. He wanted to know what made this machine tick, and more importantly, what made it stop ticking. He started with the transmission. The complex system of gears that transferred power from the 700 horsepower Maybach engine to the tracks. The Tiger's transmission was a masterpiece of German engineering. Precision cut gears, beautifully designed, theoretically capable of handling immense torque. But when Stevenson examined gears from abandoned tanks, he saw something that shouldn't have been possible. These gears weren't worn down, they were shattered. Clean breaks, brittle fractures, as if they were made of ceramic rather than steel. This is where Stevenson's expertise became crucial. He performed what's called a metallurgical analysis, examining the crystal structure of the steel at a microscopic level. What he found was shocking. The gears were too hard. Now you might think harder is better, right? Not in this case. The steel had been hardened through heat treatment, but it hadn't been properly tempered, the crucial second step that makes hard steel tough instead of brittle. Think of it like this. Properly treated steel is like a bamboo stalk, hard on the outside but with internal flexibility that absorbs shock. The tiger's gears were like glass, incredibly hard but shatter under sudden stress. Stevenson's measurements told the story. The gears measured between 60-65 on the Rockwell hardness scale. For comparison, they should have been closer to 55-58. That seemingly small difference was catastrophic. But Stevenson didn't stop at identifying the problem. He wanted to know why. How could German engineering, renowned worldwide for its precision and quality, produce such fundamentally flawed components? The answer lay in the brutal realities of total war. By 1943, Germany was desperate. The Tiger tank program was behind schedule. The Wehrmacht needed these tanks now, not next month, not after proper quality control. Stevenson obtained intelligence reports on German manufacturing processes 
and the picture became clear. The heat treatment process for these gears required precise timing and temperature control. Here's how it should work. First, you heat the steel to around 850 degrees Celsius, transforming its internal structure. Then, and this is critical, you must cool it in a controlled way, then reheat it to a lower temperature for tempering. This tempering step is what gives the steel its toughness. But tempering takes time, hours of carefully controlled heating and cooling. And time was the one thing German factories didn't have. Under pressure to meet impossible production quotas, many manufacturers were skipping or rushing the tempering process. Even worse, Stevenson discovered that quality control had been decentralized. Different manufacturers were producing components to supposedly identical specifications, but without consistent oversight. Some batches were perfect, others were ticking time bombs. The result? A Tiger's transmission might have gears from three different manufacturers with three different quality levels all meshing together. It was like building a chain where every third link was made of glass. And here's the truly devastating part. These flaws were invisible to the tank crews. The gears looked perfect. They worked fine, at first. But under the stress of combat, under the shock loads of rough terrain, under the sustained strain of moving a 54-ton vehicle through mud, crack, one tooth would shear off, then another. And suddenly a tank that cost 300,000 Reichsmarks and took 300,000 man-hours to build became 54 tons of immobile steel. Stevenson didn't just write an academic paper. He understood that his discoveries had immediate tactical value. His reports went straight to Allied commanders and they changed how the war was fought. Think about it. If you're an Allied tank commander, facing a tiger was terrifying. Your Sherman 75mm gun literally bounced off its frontal armor. In a straight fight, you'd lose. But what if you didn't need to fight at all? Stevenson's findings led to new tactical doctrines. Don't engage the tiger head-on. Make it chase you. Force it to maneuver over rough terrain. Make it accelerate, decelerate, turn sharply. Every gear shift, every direction change, every shock to the transmission increased the chance of mechanical failure. Allied commanders started receiving specific instructions. Engage tiger tanks in broken terrain, Force them to maneuver. If possible, avoid direct confrontation and wait for mechanical breakdown. And it worked. By 1944, German records show that for every Tiger lost in combat, two to three more were abandoned due to mechanical failure. The numbers are staggering. Of the roughly 1,350 Tigers produced, more were lost to breakdowns than to enemy fire. The greatest tank destroyer in World War II wasn't the Russian T-34, or the American M-26 Pershing, or the British Firefly. It was the Tiger's own transmission. For German tank crews, this was psychological warfare at its worst. You're sitting in what's supposed to be an invincible machine, but you can never be sure if the next hill, the next turn, the next gear change will be the one that leaves you stranded in enemy territory. The Germans knew about the problem, of course. Field mechanics became experts at transmission swaps. But replacing a Tiger's transmission in a field workshop took days and specialized equipment. And by 1944, Germany didn't have days. They didn't have the spare parts. They didn't have the time. After the war, Stevenson's work didn't end. In fact, it became even more important. Every major military power captured Tigers for study and Stevenson's metallurgical analysis became required reading for tank designers. The lessons learned transformed how military vehicles are engineered. Modern tank transmissions aren't just designed, they're obsessively tested. Every single gear undergoes metallurgical inspection. The heat treatment processes are computer controlled to tolerances measured in seconds and single degrees. But it's not just about better technology. Stevenson's work proved something more fundamental. In modern warfare, reliability matters as much as firepower. A tank that breaks down isn't just out of action. It can compromise an entire operation. 
Look at something like the M1 Abrams or the German Leopard 2. These tanks can operate for thousands of miles with minimal maintenance. Their transmissions are designed with multiple redundancies with materials science that would have seemed like magic to a 1940s engineer. The Tiger's gears failed because they measured 60-65 on the Rockwell scale instead of 55-58. That's the difference between a feared weapon and an expensive paperweight. Modern military gears use materials like carburized steel and advanced alloys with computerized testing that catches flaws invisible to human eyes. Every military today has facilities that echo Stevenson's workshop, places where captured or allied equipment is torn down, analyzed, tested to destruction. Because the lesson of the Tiger isn't just about bad gears, it's about understanding that your enemy's weaknesses might not be visible until you look below the surface. The Tiger tank entered service in 1942 as a revolutionary design. By 1944, it was being outproduced, outmaneuvered, and most importantly, outlasted by Allied tanks that were simpler, more reliable, and easier to maintain. So, what's the final verdict on the Tiger tank? It was, simultaneously, one of the most effective and one of the most flawed weapons of World War II. A single Tiger could dominate a battlefield, if it could reach the battlefield. Dr. Robert Stevenson never fired a shot in anger. He never commanded troops or stormed a beach. But his meticulous examination of broken gears provided intelligence that saved countless Allied lives and shortened the war. His work reminds us that war isn't just fought with courage and tactics. It's fought with engineering, metallurgy, quality control, and manufacturing capacity. The side that can field reliable, maintainable equipment has an advantage that no amount of armor or firepower can overcome. Today we see the same principles playing out. Sophisticated weapon systems are only as good as their reliability. A stealth fighter that can't fly a submarine that can't dive, a tank that can't move. None of them matter if they break down. Walk into any tank museum today and you'll likely find a tiger. They're magnificent machines, beautifully restored, impressively imposing. But look closely at the transmission housing and remember, inside that housing, barely visible gears told a story that changed military history. The Tiger tank was defeated not by a better tank, but by the same forces that defeat all complex systems. Rushed production, inadequate testing, and the relentless demands of total war. It's a lesson that remains relevant today. Sometimes the difference between victory and defeat isn't measured in armor thickness or gun caliber, but in the crystal structure of steel examined under a microscope by a metallurgist who understood that details matter. If you found this deep dive into engineering and warfare fascinating, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We've got more stories about how science and engineering shaped history, from the Manhattan Project to the space race to modern military technology. Check out our video on why German jet engines kept failing or our analysis of the engineering disasters that define the Eastern Front. Drop a comment telling me what engineering mystery you want us to investigate next. This video was made possible by viewers like you. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who help us keep making deep dive content about the intersection of science, engineering, and history.